Hi. Now in this video, I want to show you what simple harmonic motion is and the equations that we use. But first, here we have a particle attached to a vertical spring. And when it's pulled down and released, it oscillates in the vertical plane. Now it could be that you have a spring fixed to a wall and the other end attached to a particle which rests on a smooth horizontal surface. Or you may have two springs attached to the particle, one either side, both fixed to walls. Now each of these situations can be modelled by a point moving around a circle at a constant angular speed. And if we project lines from this point onto a horizontal and vertical lines, you can see that the points, the projected points, oscillate in much the same way that the particles on the springs oscillate. And if we let the centre of oscillation be O, then you can see that the points speed up as it moves towards O, and then as soon as it passes through O, it starts to slow down, coming to rest at the ends. Now, movement like this is called simple harmonic motion. And here is the definition. If a particle P moves along a straight line in such a way that the acceleration of P is always towards a fixed point O, and the magnitude of the acceleration is proportional to the displacement of P from O, then the motion of P is said to be simple harmonic motion, SHM for short. Now what I want to do now is take you through this motion in more detail and show you the equations we'll be using with this form of motion. So let's say we've got the particle then moving around this circle here at a constant angular speed omega. And at time t it's in this position here where this angle here is theta. So if the particle's turning at, say, omega radians per second, then after t seconds, this angle theta will be equal to omega t. And suppose the radius is of length a units. Then the distance from the center of oscillation, that maximum distance either side, will be a units. So just mark that on there, that that's A units from there to there. And the same is going to be in this example here, that that's going to be A units from there down to there. And A is called the amplitude, that maximum distance either side then of the centre of oscillation. Now if we let the displacement from the centre of oscillation to where the particle is, let's say we call it x, then this displacement here will also be x. When the particle's on the other side of the centre of oscillation, then this will be a negative value. Similarly, I can say that the displacement here of the particle is x. And that would mean that this vertical distance here is x. Obviously, it's not necessarily the same value of x. I've done them in different colours. But x is the letter that we use in our equations to represent the displacement from the centre of oscillation. Now, when t equals naught, the particle was here. And that would mean that the displacement x would equal a. So... For this section here, when t equals naught, x equals a. Whereas, if we're looking at this projection here, when t equals naught, the particle's here, it's at the centre of oscillation, x equals zero. So, in this section, when t equals naught, x equals naught. Now, if we take the position of the particle at any time t, so it's say here, then we've seen that for this horizontal projection, the displacement is x, which occurs in this right angle triangle here. And by trigonometry, we can see that x equals a cosine theta. So at time t, for this horizontal projection, x equals 
a cosine theta. But theta is equal to omega t. So you end up with x equaling a cos omega t. Whereas for this vertical projection, the displacement x appears in the triangle here, and x is equal to a sine theta. So at time t for this projection, at time t, x equals a then sine theta. But again, theta is omega t, so we've got sine omega t. Now, depending on where the particle starts at time t equals zero, governs which of these two equations we use for the displacement. So if it starts at the end, at the maximum amplitude, then x will equal a cos omega t. And if it starts oscillating from the center, then we measure the displacement after t seconds by x equals a sine omega t. Now if the particle has a velocity and we mark it in the direction of x increasing, let's say we call it v, or better still, the rate of change of x, and we do that with a little dot over the top, dx by dt. And also, it's going to be accelerating. So again, if I mark in the acceleration in the direction of x increasing, then this will be to differentiate the velocity with respect to time. And so we call that x double dot. Now if I look at the horizontal projection here where the displacement x is given by a cos omega t, then it's very easy to get x dot, the velocity. All I need to do is just differentiate with respect to t, x. So we've got x dot equals, and the differential of cos omega t is going to be minus omega sine omega t. So multiply it with the a and you end up with minus a omega sine omega t. And if I was to square this, then we've got the velocity squared or x dot squared. And that's going to be a squared omega squared sine squared omega t. And through our trigonometric identities, we should know that sine squared omega t is the same as 1 minus cos squared omega t. So we've got a squared omega squared multiplied by 1 minus cos squared omega t. But we know that cos omega t, if we were to rearrange this equation, is x over a. So cos squared omega t will be x squared over a squared. So what I've got here is a squared omega squared multiplied with 1 minus x squared over a squared. And if I just multiply through by the a squared, what I get left with is omega squared multiplied by a squared minus x squared. And this will be equal to x dot squared, or v squared. And this is another equation that we'll be using when it comes to working with simple harmonic motion. So just border that off. Now I got this equation by considering this horizontal projection. But it's equally true if I consider the vertical projection through this equation here. Look, if I differentiate this with respect to t, I get x dot dx by dt equals, and then differentiating sine omega t gives me omega cos omega t. So multiply it with the a, and you get a omega cos omega t. And if I square both sides, we therefore have x dot squared equals a squared omega squared cos squared omega t. But cos squared omega t is the same as 1 minus sine squared omega t. So I can write that as 1 minus sine squared omega t. And we've seen that sine omega t would be x over a. And if I squared that, that would be x squared over a squared. And we're back 
to where we were just a few moments ago down here. In this bracket we've got 1 minus x squared over a squared. Expand that out with the a squared and you'll get exactly this equation here. OK, so we've got the displacement equations and the velocity equation. What we need to do now is get the equations for acceleration. And for this horizontal projection here, if we take the velocity, or x dot, and differentiate this with respect to t, differentiating x dot with respect to t gives us x double dot. OK, so we have x double dot. and Differentiating sine omega t with respect to t gives us omega cos omega t. So multiply it with minus a omega and you end up with minus a omega squared cos omega t. But a cos omega t was x. So we end up with x double dot, the acceleration, equaling minus omega squared times x. And again, we'll arrive at exactly this equation if we took this motion. If we took our equation up here for x dot, differentiated this with respect to t, then you're going to have x double dot equals minus a omega squared sine omega t. And a sine omega t, well that's x. So you get x double dot equals minus omega squared x. Same as what we had here. So it doesn't matter whether we're considering this motion or horizontal motion. The acceleration x double dot then equals minus omega squared x. And this is something, again, that you need to remember. Now in the first part of this video, I gave you a definition for simple harmonic motion. Remember, I said that if a particle P moves along a straight line in such a way that the acceleration of P is always towards a fixed point O, and the magnitude of the acceleration is proportional to displacement of P from O, then the motion of P is said to be simple harmonic motion, SHM. Well, that's exactly what we've got here in this equation. The acceleration is proportional to the displacement x because we've got a constant here, omega squared. Notice we've got a minus though, so we know the acceleration is directed back towards the fixed point O. So when you get an equation like this, this defines simple harmonic motion, SHM. And you're going to find that in questions, when you're asked to prove that a particle performs simple harmonic motion, you need to prove this particular result. Now finally, I just want to talk to you about one other equation, and that is the period of oscillation. We denote it by the capital letter T. The period T is the time it takes the particle to go from, say, the end here, all the way down to the end here and back again. It doesn't matter where you start from, you could start from O here. It will be the same time, it will go up here, back down and up to there. That time is the time it takes the particle to make one revolution around this circle. And since there's two pi radians in one turn, and it's going at an angular speed of omega radians per second, then the period t is going to be equal to 2 pi, the number of radians in one turn, and it's how many times we can fit that angular speed omega into 2 pi, which will give us the period then of oscillation. So another formula then that you're going to be using a lot when it comes to working with simple harmonic motion. So I hope that's given you a basic breakdown of the equations then that we use in problems like this. So we'll be doing a few more questions in future videos. So do learn these equations and I hope that this has been of some use to you.